Today we are going to be making this super snazzy, what I like to call a flex gallery. And I really like this one because it doesn't include all that much JavaScript and it leans heavily upon CSS for Flexbox, for transitions, and for some events that CSS is going to emit to us. So this is really cool. We're gonna lean on CSS quite a bit. Let's take a look at what we're starting with here. We've got this thing I like to call flex panels. And if we scroll down to the HTML, we've got a div with a class of panels and each of these panels is going to be called a panel singular. And then inside of each of those panels is going to be, Hey, let's dance, give, take, receive. And these are going to be words that when clicked, they're going to grow in size as well as they're going to fall from the top and come up from the bottom. So what I wanted to start to do is I've given you some CSS. If we open this up in the browser now, you see, we start with some CSS that it looks, but it doesn't do anything and it actually is not in the right place. So I wanted to write the, the actual important part, which is the Flexbox piece with you as well. Let's go down to our, or up to our CSS. And first of all, we need to get our panels going side by side. So if we go to the panels div, you need to display flex on them. And by the way, if you are new to Flexbox, I have an entire series at flexbox.io that you can visit uh, and that will guide you through similar to this one as well. And when I make those flex, they're going to go side by side by side by side and just stick them all there. Next, what we need to do is we need to go to each of the individual panels and tell them, okay, well, this is as much room as the flex box, uh, flex child needs. It's, it's as big as the words are. So this one's the biggest because it has the biggest word experience. But what we want to tell it to do is that we've got all this extra space here. Why don't you split it amongst yourselves, children? So we go to our panel and we simply just say flex one. And what that means is that each of them are going to evenly distribute the extra space among each other. And, and that one might not make sense, but we're going to come back to that in just a second. So believe me, there we go. Okay. So flex of one will make them evenly distribute the extra uh, space in between them. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Now let's, let's move on to each of the panels and get them, uh, visually looking like this, where the items are going to be centered in thirds. So we're going to go to our, our panel here. And first of all, just put a border, a one PAX solid red on it, just so we can see what's going on here. Visually, I think this will really help us. So what's going on here? We've got each of these panels. Oh, we don't want to put the border on each of the panels. Sorry. We want to put the border on each of the flex items or the flex children, which is here, panel, angle bracket, star. Put a border there just so we can see what's going on here. Okay, so these are our three items. Now I want them to, again, I have all of extra work vertically. How do I get them to go up and down? So we'll go back to our panel here and we will we'll say justify content center. Where does that get us? Okay, so that gets them centered left to right. We want to say align items center, which still won't get us much, but we also need to make this panel here display flex. And this is a really good example of when you will nest flex box because let's, let's take a pause for a second. What is the flex container here? Panels. What is the flex item? Panel but we're also going to make panel a flex container. An element in CSS can be both a flex item, which it is right here, as well as a flex container, which we are going to do by making it display flex. So by doing that, we stack them left to right because that's the default of Flexbox. We wanna change that and we're going to say flex direction column and that will vertically center them in the middle. But then I also want each of these items to take up one third. And that's just exactly what we've done. So let's scroll down to our flex children or flex items. And we've already put a border on it. And here we're going to flex one zero auto. And that will give us these here. And we want to display flex on that as well, which doesn't do too much except bring the text to the left. But if we do justify content center and align items center, 
Now we've got everything perfectly centered. This is just a lot of Flexbox nested and nested and nested, which allows us to get this really cool layout. Okay, so looking pretty good to me so far. Now what I wanna do is I wanna hide give all the way up and I wanna take you can and today and receive and hide them all the way down. So what we're gonna use is translate Y for that. So let's go down right here. I'm gonna say dot panel, angle bracket star, first child. It's going to be transform, translate Y, negative 100%. So each of the first children are going to be negative 100%. Okay, so that puts them off screen. And then the last child is going to be 100%. The idea that we're going for here is that when you take off this translate Y, it's going to animate itself. See what it's doing? It's going to transition itself in and out, in and out, in and out. And the way that that's going to work is that when the panel has a class of open active, we are going to translate y zero. And when the panel has a class of open active, we are going to take the last child and translate y zero as well. So what that means is that if we take any one of these panels and add a class of open active, it will animate itself in, take it off, and they go away. So you can take the border away if you if you sort of get it now of but where the elements are on the page. I think we've got a pretty good idea of visualizing it. So that is what we've got so far. The last bit of the puzzle is that when these panels also have a class of open, what's going to happen is that it needs to get bigger. You see that the font size already changed, but when the panel has a class of open, scroll down to line 85 or so, we want to give it a flex of five. And now what does that mean? Well, earlier we said a flex of one means that each of them are going to evenly distribute the extra room. So by giving it a flex of five, what that means is that when it has a class of open, it's going to take five times the amount of extra room as the rest of them because they are regular flex of one. And now we are having a flex of five. And that means it should just grow a little bit bigger. So if I go to one of my panels here, give it a class of open, you see that it will animate itself in, take the away, animate itself out. I, I keep saying animate, I mean transition. Um, and why that's happening is because of this. The panel has a transition in which we are transitioning the font size uh, over 0.7 seconds, and we're using these cubic beziers that we've done in previous classes. And what that does is it allows us to get this cool like open and close where it goes a little bit bigger and a little bit smaller than it should and snaps back into place. Now, now that we've got all of the CSS in place, we really just have to write a little bit of JavaScript so that when we click them, it will do that adding and removing of classes. So first we want to grab all the panels. Make sure that's query selector all, not query selector, and that will give us a node list of all the different ones that we have. And then we want to write a function that's going to toggle that class of on or open. So it's a function toggle open. Let's say this dot class list dot toggle open. And then on each of the panels, we're going to listen for a click. Good. So we're going to take each of the panels, loop over each one of them listen for a click on each one of them, and then run the toggle function when it is run. Often I have people ask me, why isn't it toggle open like that? Because that would run on page load. What we want to do here is we don't want to run the function. We just want to give it reference to the function and say, hey, when someone clicks me, make sure that you go find this function and run it. So let's see where we're at right now. Oh, we got a bit of an error here. Missing a parenthesis on line 133. Got it. Doesn't seem to be working. Let's debug this real quick. Console log, hello. There we go. Hello, hello, hello. Why is it not toggling the class of open? Oh, I see the error here. It's because we are listening on each individual panel, singular, not all the panels. So now when I click it, it's going to add a class of open to that specific panel and remove that class 
add that class and remove that class. Now, the second step is that once this has finished transitioning itself open, that's when I want to bring in the, the word from the top and bring in the word from the bottom. So in a previous exercise, what we did is we listened for the transition end event, which is exactly what we're going to do here. Go down to your panels and just duplicate that line. We're going to listen for the transition end event, and we're going to toggle class of open active with a function called toggle active. So let's go up here and write that. And we'll say the, normally what we would do is we say this dot class list dot toggle open active. However, there is going to be multiple transition end events being fired, and I'll show you how to figure that out. We pass the event to this. We'll comment that out for now. And console log e dot property name. Let's see what we got here. So I'm going to click on one of these, which is going to trigger a transition. When that transition is finished, it's going to tell us what transitioned. Oh, font size and flex grow. So two things are being transitioned here. Why? Because if you look at our CSS, when the panel is open, we are transitioning the flex and the font size. Both of those things are getting bigger when the class is open. And really, we only care about the flex grow here. So what we can do is we say if e dot property name and normally we would say flex grow. However, I did find some bugs in Safari where in Safari it's just flex, and in the rest of the browsers it's flex grow. So even though if we if you scroll up here, we have explicitly stated that we are working with flex here. Some of the browsers tell us flex grow. Some of them tell us it's flex. So what we need to do is just cover both of our bases. And rather than checking if it's explicitly flex grow, we'll see if it includes the word flex. And if that is true, then we will toggle the class of open active. So again, what's happening here? We are listening for a click on each panel. When someone clicks, we're going to open it. That's going to then in turn trigger a CSS open. And when that finishes, the second one transition end will fire. And that's when we're going to toggle open active. And then it will just go the other way when you click it off as well. So here we go. Open it up and they animate itself in from the sky and down from the bottom. And then you close it up. They open themselves up and close. So this is pretty cool. When you open up multiple, what I really like about this is you do not have to specify a width for this specific gallery because if each of them have a flex of five, they will simply each take a little bit less of the extra room. If one of them, it's going to take a lot more. Hopefully you like that. I'll see you in the next one.